Hello, everyone, and welcome to Making History, Singing the Earth. My name is Eric Tuan, and I'm the Artistic Director of the Piedmont East Bay Children's Choir. Our organization has a long history of musical innovation, inspired by the vision of our founding artistic director, Robert Geary. Each spring, we present a concert called Making History, which is dedicated to musical exploration and discovery. It might involve hearing the world premiere of a newly commissioned piece of music, unearthing forgotten gems from the musical past, or exploring contemporary social issues through music. Today's Making History concert does all three of those things, singing stories of the earth during a time of unprecedented change. Today's program is divided into three parts. First, we'll celebrate the joy and beauty of springtime through music, featuring a special digital collaboration with our longtime friends and choral partners, the renowned Finnish youth choir, Vox Aurea. Next, we'll hear three gorgeous but rarely heard pieces by the Anglo-African composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor. And finally, we'll conclude the program with the world premiere of two works by Jonathan Goodwin and Carrie Andrew. Don't forget to check out the concert program in the video description, where you can find out more information about the music, the singers, and the program. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carrie Bukevich, and I'm the executive director here at the Piedmont East Bay Children's Choir. Before we begin today's concert, please join Eric and I in thanking all of those who have made this event possible. First and foremost, we are so grateful to our season sponsors, Bell Investment Advisors. Your generous support, continued passion for the choir, and thoughtful investment in our East Bay community model leadership for all of our singers. Special thanks go out to all of our teaching artists and our musicians, our hardworking administrative team, the dedicated members of our board of directors, and our founder, Susie Rawl, for championing the choir over most of our first four decades. We'd especially like to thank our cel and celebrate our concert producer and lead editor, Tate Bissinger, for her stellar work in producing today's program. And we're deeply grateful to our guest artists, the Stanford Chamber Chorale, Vox Aria, and Ir Arwen. Collaborating with you in song is an honor and a joy. And finally, I'd like to thank you, our supporters, families, and friends for your generosity. It is because of your support that we are thrilled to be able to offer all of our 2020-2021 season concerts online free of charge. The first section of today's program, Songs of Springtime, celebrates the joy and beauty of the season of renewal. We'll start by hearing two spring carols from medieval Finland sung by the singers of Ensemble in collaboration with the Finnish youth choir Vox Aurea and the medieval instrumental ensemble Ur Awen. Let's welcome ensemble singer Sarah Turley, who will share more about these two pieces. Hello, my name is Sarah Turley and I sing with Ensemble. About two years ago, I had the amazing opportunity to tour with Ensemble to Finland and Estonia. I consider this to be one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. During the tour, we were hosted by two partner choirs, Volks Audia in Finland and in Estonia, the Estonian Television Girls Choir. During our stay with Volks Audia, we homestayed with the Finnish singers sang joint concerts together, and even got to try a traditional Finnish sauna. It was amazing to connect with other singers our age in a different part of the world and experience their culture. During the tour, I learned so much about Finland and Estonia, two places I previously knew nothing about. This year, we have been collaborating with Vox Audia and a medieval band, Jur Awen, on a special recording project. 
The two groups have been working together on music from P.A. Canciones, a songbook from the 16th century Finland that contains some of the most famous medieval melodies. Although the songs are well known in Latin, they have never before been recorded in medieval Finnish. During today's concert, we will share two songs for springtime. One is a joyful Easter carol celebrating the flowering of spring, Tempus Adis Floridu. You may recognize the melody because it was later reused for the Christmas carol Good King Wenceslas. The second piece, Invernali Tempore, is slower and more reflective and features some particular beautiful playing from the members of Year Arwen. We are so grateful to Vox Aurea's conductor, Sana Salminen, for inviting us to be a part of this project. We hope you enjoy Tempus Aris Floridum and Invernali Tempore. Ta 
Hi, I'm Andrew Brown, and I'm the Concert Choir Director here at Piedmont East Bay Children's Choir. This spring, we had the opportunity to explore the music of African-American composer Betty Jackson King. Mrs. King was from the Chicago area and uh, was not only a prolific composer, but a vocal performer, an educator, composer of, of orchestral music as well. And we enjoyed exploring this beautiful song in the springtime. It discovers the feelings of what it means to be filled with joy and wonder at the change of the season. You're going to hear in the music, um, our students were able to develop some vocal technique through this song, and it explores how Mrs. King wrote for an emerging singer. She herself being um, a well-respected performer in, her, in Chicago, and transferred that into her music as an educator and a vocalist. Enjoy our song. I'm Robert Geary and I'm the conductor of Encora. Encora will sing To Be Sung on the Water, composition by Samuel Barber and poetry by Louise Bogan, two preeminent 20th century American artists. Louise Bogan has a distinction of being the first woman poet laureate of the Smithsonian Institution. In her poem To Be Sung on the Water, she explores the ephemeral nature of delight and suggests that it should be appreciated in its own moment. Beautiful, my delight, pass as we pass the wave, pass as the mottled night leaves what it cannot save, scattering dark and bright beautiful, pass and be less than the guiltless shade to which our vows were said, less than the sound of the oar to which our vows were made, less than the sound of its blades dipping the stream once more.
Greetings, everyone. My name is Steve Sano, and I'm a professor of music and director of choral studies at Stanford University. I direct the Stanford Chamber Chorale, and on behalf of the chorale, we'd like to extend our warmest thanks to Eric Twan and the Piedmont East Bay Children's Choir Organization for the invitation to participate in today's program. The Stanford Chamber Chorale is the Stanford Department of Music's most select choral ensemble, and it's a group of 24 students, both undergraduate and graduate, who come from every academic corner of the university. It's been great fun to collaborate with the Piedmont East Bay Children's Choir's mixed voice ensemble, Echo, for the past few months, and we, we so appreciate the opportunity to connect with the smart, articulate, and musically acute students in the group. Later on in the program, we'll be joining Echo in the world premiere of British composer Carrie Andrews' new work, Wake Up. But right now, we're honored to share a piece of choral literature from the Romantic era, Richard Strauss's Morgan. This piece was originally composed for solo voice and piano, but we present it in a choral arrangement by Stanley Hoffman. The text is by John Henry McKay, and the piece is truly a duet between the voices and the piano here, played by Stanford's director of collaborative piano, Laura Dahl. As Francis Molyneux writes, quote, The piece takes the natural world as a model of the love the speaker bears for the ad addressee. Like the sun, this love resurges each new day after sinking into the warmth of a silent night. End quote. Here, then, is Richard Strauss's Morgan. <laughs> Thank you. 
The second part of today's program features three nature-themed choral works by the Anglo-African composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Coleridge Taylor was one of the most famous musical figures of the Victorian era in England before his untimely death at the young age of 37. His cantata Hiawatha's Wedding Feast was one of the most popular choral works in England for well over half a century and received critical acclaim from such composers as Sir Edward Elgar and Sir Arthur Sullivan of Gilbert and Sullivan fame. Coleridge Taylor also played a role in the burgeoning Pan-African movement of the early 20th century. His father, Dr. Daniel Taylor, was a Creo physician from Sierra Leone, and his mother, Alice Martin, was an Englishwoman from Croydon in Surrey. Dr. Taylor was descended from the Black Loyalists, a group of African-American slaves who fought for their freedom on the British side during the American Revolution. During his career, Coleridge Taylor embarked on several concert tours to the United States, where he was greeted with a particularly warm welcome by black communities. Coleridge Taylor inspired the founding of one of the nation's historic black choirs and was one of the first individuals of African descent to be invited to the White House to meet with then-President Teddy Roosevelt. Our program today features three works by Coleridge Taylor that, to the best of our knowledge, have never been recorded before. Concert Choir will begin with a lilting pastoral duet called Oh the Summer. Ensemble will share a wonderfully mysterious part song called And Sinctured with the Twine of Leaves. The words are by the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, after whom the composer, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, was named. Ankhora will conclude this set with a piece called From the Green Heart of the Waters. It was written as incidental music for a play called Ulysses in 1902. The song captures the ancient Greek myth of the sirens, these mysterious mermaid-like figures who were said to lure sailors to their deaths on the rocky coast of their island through the beauty of their singing. Hello, my name is Ava and I'm a mentor and officer in Concert Choir. I'm really proud of the work Concert Choir continues to do online. Although it isn't really the same on Zoom, at least we get to continue our amazing work and fun with the same positive energy. I think we are all excited for when we can make music together again in person. Our next song, All the Summer, is by an English composer, Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Coleridge Taylor was a very successful composer in the early 1900s who was of mixed race and achieved great popularity. Oh, the Summer describes the many moods and feelings that the summer can usher in.
Hello everyone, and thank you so much for coming to this concert. My name is Claire Weiss, and I sing with Ensemble. We're going to share a beautiful piece called Insincture with a Twine of Leaves, with music by Samuel Coleridge Taylor. The words are by the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, after whom Samuel Coleridge Taylor was named. This poem describes a mysterious scene. There was a boy plucking fruit in the wilderness, alone, surrounded by beautiful greenery under the moonlight. Who is he? Why is he alone? What is going on in this beautiful and bewildering landscape? The music offers tantalizing clues, but it is up to you, the listener, to decide. While we sing, you'll see videos that ensemble singers took inspired by some of the themes of the poem. Isolation, mystery, wilderness, and solitude. We hope you enjoy the modern premiere of Insinctured with a Twine of Leaves.
in-person day camp this summer called Choir Camp Constellation at Chabot Space and Science Center. Join us for a week of out of this world singing, spacecrafts, extraterrestrial theory, and cosmic exploration. This will be a universal experience and we can't wait to see you. Calling all recruits. Mission Control is waiting to hear your voice. So come and create celestial harmonies and hike where no man has gone before to visit a turtle named Bob. Please join us for Choir Camp 2021, Camp Constellation at Chabot Space and Science Center. Our rockets blast off soon, so make sure to reserve your spot ASAP by giving Mission Control a call. Starting countdown, three, two, one. <laughs> The final portion of today's program features two world premiere performances. Ankora will share the first performance of Strange Children by the Bay Area composer Jonathan Goodwin. We first met Jonathan in 2012 when he composed a gorgeous setting of William Blake for us entitled The Land of Dreams. Our second world premiere today is presented by the singers of Echo and our special guest artists, the Stanford Chamber Chorale under the direction of Stephen Makoto Sano. The work is by the English composer and novelist Carrie Andrew, whom I first met through a mutual friend from the Stanford Chamber Chorale. During my years of teaching Echo, 
I have been deeply inspired by the ways our young people are confronting the climate crisis through art, activism, and action. I wanted to channel some of that energy into our own music making together and commissioned Carrie to write a piece for us on this topic. She responded with Wake Up, a setting of words from young climate activists from around the globe, all calling on us to do our part to confront the climate crisis. I'd especially like to thank Steve Sano and his wonderful singers from the Stanford Chamber Chorale for joining us as part of this world premiere performance. I'd also like to thank Stanford climate scientist Mike Mastandrea, who offered an illuminating presentation to our true groups during our joint retreat together. And finally, I'd like to thank ECHO's associate conductor, Joel Chapman, for the masterly work he has done in weaving together this final performance. I'm delighted to have both Jonathan and Carrie with us virtually to share a little bit about their music. Let's turn to a conversation between maestro Bob Geary and Jonathan Goodwin before the first performance of Strange Children. In front of me now. (laughs) Hello, my name is Robert Geary and I have the happy duty of being the director of Encora. And I'm pleased to welcome Jonathan Goodwin here this evening uh, for the premiere of his work, Strange Children. Well, hello, audience. Pleased to meet you. There's some history behind this. In 2013, Jonathan composed The Land of Dreams for Ensemble, uh, which went on to be part of our repertoire for a couple of years, including uh, when we went to Bratislava uh, for a competition. But I digress. Land of Dreams, Jonathan, was a beautiful, sort of innocent setting of text by William Blake. Um, There's a story about how Sue Bolin and I heard you performing that piece on your concertina and how uh, Sue actually advocated and encouraged you to make a choral composition out of it. The result was stunning. Uh, We're very, very grateful for that. But now we turn to Strange Children, which even the title is sort of provocative. And as we study the text and the music, it seems to be perhaps um, a strong contrast in nature to Land of Dreams. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the piece and your motivation to write it and the intention that you have in its composition. Um, The first piece, uh, was about a child who would, in his dreams, would meet his deceased mother. And he found that the place where she was then abiding was a much nicer place than the place where he lived. Uh, the last verse was, uh, Father, what do we hear in this, um, in this land of unbelief and fear? The land of dreams is better by far above the light of the morning star. So the the child was not concerned with uh, the physical aspect of life. He was rather self-actuated, you might say, and interested in um, in the finer aspects. You know, in the beauty, in in beauty in particular. This this piece, Strange Children, is basically at the other end of that scale. Uh, The text is about survival. It's about God thump our enemies so that we can uh, have an advantage in battle and, um, you know, so that we can survive. It, it's, uh, it's a very visceral, unkind text. The term, and I should explain, strange children isn't about children. It's a derogatory term for their and these people's enemies. Uh, it's a way of saying, you know, they're they're strangers who are immature. Um, it just has that crazy ring, you know, uh, strange children. Uh, that kind of made it a little irresistible to me. And what I tried to do with the piece was bring out the different layers hidden within or behind this, the the physical aggression. In other words, what they're yearning for in the in the plea in the text is somewhat similar, I think, to what the child is yearning for in the Blake text. 
is this a, a, an experience of sublimity. It's just not obvious. So with the piece, it begins with a little scurrying around, uh, strike the mountains and they will, um, uh, what is it? They will, I don't know, they'll, they'll, they'll be fire. In other words, create volcanic eruptions. Uh, and then there's an exposition of the tune. And then there's, that's followed by uh, one group singing the tune and a second. And they're sort of in opposition to each other, offset by two bars. And you get a sense of this bipolarity, uh, one group against the next. You know, it's sung kind of aggressively. But then when there's three of them, not two, not one, but three layered together, each offset by two bars, something kind of magical happens and it becomes sublime. It becomes beautiful. And that's what I tried to get across in the piece was the, these, these, the layers within layers of what that the aggression is covering up the desire, a, a real basic desire for, for love, basically. The reason that people are so attracted to infants and puppies and kittens is that all they really want is love. And this is, this is a layer within us that then gets covered up with emotional concerns and intellectual concerns and so on. And the, the piece tries to take that out into the next, uh, the level above that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Jonathan, where specifically did you find the text? Well, um, I just read through the book of Psalms because it's, uh, you know, pretty common, or at least at one time, it was a common source for texts. Yeah. And I was just looking for things that were interesting. And I found this one. And uh, so I set this and the pelican of the wilderness and thou art my son. So this is actually one of three awesome. that the, te the text just, I don't know, kind of cohered for me and uh, were something turned out to be something I wanted to pursue. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I think that that's very insightful for us, and I think it helps all of us, the performers, but as but our audience as well, to understand what exactly we're doing besides singing. Uh, so, thank you very much for being with us. And and uh, here is the premiere of Strange Children by Jonathan Goodwin. And I thank you very much.
Hi everybody, my name's Kerry Andrew and I'm a composer and author based in London uh, and I've written a piece called Wake Up. Uh, it's about the climate emergency um, and takes texts from several youth activists uh, from the very well-known Greta Thunberg um, to many other very industrious uh, young um, activists uh, mostly in America and also uh, a 12 year old activist from India. The reason I've written this piece is because the climate emergency is the most pressing uh, topic of our time and I wanted to find a way to express some of the fury that I found in the young activists' speeches through this piece. Um, I researched uh, several activists through their speeches, through videos uh, and through news items and articles and distilled little bits of speeches down until I, I made a text uh, that kind of ran in a linear fashion that felt like the right thing to work with. Um, I really hope you enjoy this piece. Uh, I hope you can take from it just the the anger and the urgency that I really got from watching speeches by the young activists and hope to convey through the, the choral music I've written. I was born into a world in which my future and my past are uncertain. My dream. Born into a world where my culture and inheritance are literally slipping into the sea. My dream. Born into a world where my people are going extinct. My dream. How do I even begin to convey to you what it feels like to know that within my lifetime, the destruction that we have already seen from the climate crisis will only get worse. People call my generation, Generation Z, as if we are the last generation, but we are not. We are refusing to be the last letter of the alphabet. Leaders, adults with power, I'm speaking directly to you, and I say you gave Generation Z no choice but to drop everything, sacrifice our time, our energy, our childhoods, stand out here in the pouring rain to organize a mass mobilization for you guys to wake up. Oh uh -huh. 
Thank you all for joining us for this afternoon's program. We hope you'll join us for our post-concert talk, which will take place on Zoom. You can find the link either in the concert chat or in the RSVP email for today's program. We hope these songs of the earth, our fragile island home, will continue to challenge, inspire, and delight you. <laughs>